trying to do here is what ultimately what I'd love to do is hold the top and tap anywhere and tap anywhere and get a nice note and have all these notes sound wonderful but when we start off there's going to be a few a few of the same notes deader notes I'm hearing a lot of the same notes again that's because this system is too stiff nice notes but they're the same ones Trying to figure out which one I'm going to do. Kind of dead. Still dead. A little better. Kind of dead. Let's voice this one. First thing I'm going to do is just take away the unintended material. I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to do this fairly quickly. I'm probably going to voice this. It's a kind of junk tops. I may keep them. I don't know. Uh, I might, I'll probably take this you know, 80% of the way, but it'll be enough so that you can see what's going on here. This particular brace here. Uh, anyhow, that's been scooped at the very end. By the way, uh, my dreadnoughts are only scalloped on one side. Um, and a big guitar that just for me that gives me more balance. Asymmetry favors favors balance. Um, violins are braced asymmetrically. Lutes were braced asymmetrically. Mandolins are braced asymmetrically. And that's on um, the treble side. Pardon me. Treble side. Yeah, on the treble side. And I look at it as a stiff side and a flexible side. You. You've heard, you know, the, the stories of T.J. Thompson, you know, bracing a guitar upside down by, by mistake, and it's like the best sounding guitar at the GAL listening right. event. You know, he has a, he has a. I, I don't think the sides matter, but <coughs> that you that you have asymmetry matters. So I'm trying to s introduce more asymmetry. When, when I'm building a dreadnought. I care, I care more about the top end when I'm building a smaller guitar I care more about the bottom end you know because that's what you have to kind of work on exactly but ultimately I want that you know that that balance um, Balance, presence, clarity, you know, those I, I want those qualities in, in any guitar that I build and in any wood. So I'm still just kind of making sort of these machine things look more like braces before I even start. I'm not even paying too much attention. Can you can you kind of get a sense? From what's going on. Okay, that's great. I'm just going to put a little scoops on the end of these guys because we're going to start conservatively. This is great because you get to make a big old mess. Let's do some listening. Yeah. We're hearing some different notes. They're sounding different notes. Some, some more different ones. They're not all super musical. Some of them are better than others. We need more work. And it's super flex, uh, super stiff this way. Across, I don't know if you can see this. You kind of have to kind of get your hands on them. But there's, it's a spring. It's like a spring. You know, you kind of get a feel for <coughs> the tension that you want to build into this thing. This has got a nice spring to it. This is rigid as a rock. So let's.
let's, so the next stage, so I'm going to put more of a triangular shape into some of these major braces. And again, I'm going to do this quickly. So you know, one thing I should say is I'm not actually trying to tune anything. People ask me, are you tuning to specific notes? I'm really not. I'm letting the notes fall where they are. I won't just want to get a bunch of them, and I want them to sound musical as opposed to thud. I'd love it if we had like a beating note or something. It doesn't, doesn't often turn up, but it'd be cool to watch. Now I haven't changed the stiffness too, too much. Oh, I forgot to. I haven't changed the stiffness too, too much here because I'm going for that, that triangular shape. Getting there, huh? Yeah. It's not too stiff, but you can see how it's progressing. guys out even some more because these little braces here are all tucked under the under the lining so you've got to kind of take them down to nothing but I can make it more flexible at the edge if I take this peak back farther that's fairly flexible these guys are still stiff so what do I do next I'm going to work on how it feels out here at the edge. Let's look at this top. This top is off quarter. Not very, but a lot of very fine guitars are off quarter. Some of my favorite pre-war Martins and Gibsons are off quarter. So that's one of those internet things. You can't tell your customer that it's awesome sometimes unless he's a player. Is that red spruce? This is red, torrified red spruce and torrified braces. So right around the edges, actually, actually these edges are more on quarter than the center. So I'm going to lengthen the scoops on the finger braces to get a little more springiness at the edge. Is this all making sense? Am I kind of? Oh, yeah. 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 This is, there's a logic to it all. Wasn't always there when I started, but you know, when you do, we build eight guitars a week, and I have a helper who takes things to a fairly close to where they ought to be. We've worked together for years now, and then I come in and I kind of finish them off, and then he'll sand the braces so they look pretty. But it's only to say that it really doesn't take that much time. Um, and it's a system that I could easily train someone else, you know, someone with a good ear and eventually a little experience to, to dovetail with. So let's see what we've got. It's also good when you can just walk ar around the top and get a good musical note from pretty much anywhere. Different notes. See, I'm tapping in different places also. than the major ones, and that's a good thing. So, I'm going to stop there. I'm not quite done, but I'm close enough so that you can see how far it's come from where I started to where I am here. And I'm going to just open it up for questions mm -hmm. after I take a sip of water. When you're feeling for stiffness, do you want it pretty much equal? Lengthways as well as crossways, or I like it that way. I mean, I've talked to 
makers who have different ways of doing it, and you know, they're right. Their guitars sound awesome. They sound different, but you know, I've always gone for this sort of vintage sound with a nice balance and clarity. I don't care about loudness, but I care about presence. Presence is more important to me than decibels. Presence means you're, you can be heard beside the banjo player or on a mic or with a pickup. So is that a good way of gauging, hey, wait a minute, I'm going a little bit too far? When you, when oh, the stiffness, yeah. 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 Frequently, if we go a little too far, it's usually what I'm doing, you know, the finger braces here. And we just take them off and glue other ones on and start over again. It's, oh, yeah, man. Do it again. How are these likely to change after the membrane is glued to the rim? Generally, if the top sounds good, so again, I'm going for the shotgun approach. You know, I've got a bunch of, I've, I've got, a, I've got quite a bit of frequency separation. I didn't bring any backs, but the backs are also the same way. You can tap along the brace and get some different notes. You can hold in different places. You can tap in the membranes. You get the steel drum effect. Um, if you've got, got enough of that going on, you're still going to have a good, good filter system by the time it's all glued together. When it's glued together, again, we tap the tops and the backs, flex them, and you can make that adjustment by sanding the outside of the guitar. Of course, you've got to do it before you cut your binding ledges, or it screws up your binding ledges. Okay, so now we glue this big, massive, heavy bridge on the top. How does that change? Well, I don't know that it necessarily kills anything. <clears throat> Again, I think the concept I'm trying to get across is if you have enough variety, by the time you've done everything, you still have something left. But if you start off with not much, okay. you know, and you go through all of these changes, and you lose something, you have even less. So it's the sh think, think shotgun approach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So related to that, the bridge plane, nobody ever talks about bridge planes. Is it that negligible? No, we actually, you know, there have been times when I've played around with the edges of the bridge plate. But no, I, I think the bridge plate, you know, the size, the material, this is torrified maple. Um, most of you probably already know that I like torrified wood. Um, it sounds so much crisper and cleaner from the get-go than untorified wood. Is there any trouble with the cracking torrified? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. That's what I always worried. I haven't tried torrified yet, but it always kind of scared me a little bit. Well, it can be overcooked. Yeah. So when I, when I buy a batch of tops, what you want to do is cut like a half-inch strip off one edge, break it, and see what the fibers look like. And if it shears, you don't want that top. You know, you'll, the fibers will never be as long. Try it, you know, try it with a piece of red spruce that isn't torrified and see what the fibers look like. The fibers will never be quite as long, but you want to see, you, that gives you a good a sense of the integrity of the top. I haven't tried it yet. It just kind of always kind of scared me a little bit. <laughs> to each his own. Yeah, yeah. Without pitting you to, uh, Seller, who, who is providing good torrified wood spots? Well, when I started using it, there weren't there were not very many. There's a uh, Boucher guitars in Quebec. Um, um, Stumac has torrified, carries torrified uh, Sitka. Uh, Pacific Rim carries torrified Sitka. A bunch of others. We actually built a kiln, but. We made it out of a scientific oven, which is programmable temperature and humidity. I'm not going to get too far into torrefaction, but it was a four by four by four oven. And guess how many $200 tops you can put in there and ruin? <laughs> <laughs> a lot. <laughs> but so I prefer to buy it already torrefied and then decide whether I want it or not. Sanding? Uh, does it affect the, the sound or just aesthetics? You mean like smoothing the braces? Yeah, you, you know, I try to do a clean enough job. I, I was working fast here because I wanted to get from here to here, you know, so you can kind of remember 
from beginning to end. But I usually try to do a, a pretty clean job so there isn't a lot of sanding. I mean, some guys Probably play it that does. affects the sound. And, and not so sure. Yeah. Have you ever seen the inside of a vintage <coughs> guitar? About what? A vintage guitar. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I brought, brought this out. Yeah. yeah. Case closed. <laughs> Uh, now, on all your models, do you, or just certain models you're using Fortify, or just, are all, are you doing all? Fortify? It's an option. It's, it's, an, option. it's an option. So all of our standard models are priced as Fortify. But we build far more Fortify. Oh, People okay. always, I mean, that's kind of, you know, you get known for something. Mm -hmm. It's It just works with my system of building. All I've ever wanted to do is build guitars that sound as good as my favorite old vintage guitars. Yes. Which is an impossible task, but I've modified everything. I go, you know, thin, hard finishes, I'm trying to accelerate that aging process. What kind of glue do you use? Um, we use fish glue for on Torrified. By the way, um, hide glue does not work very well on Torrified. Fish glue does. Aliphatic resin glue works fine. I've been asked this question a lot. So, in my belief, what I said earlier, the design of the guitar individual pieces of wood that you select and the decisions that the builder make account for, in my opinion, 80% of the sound of the guitar. Think of all of the other aspects and what percent do you think the glue accounts for? <laughs> right? Not to say that it doesn't help, you know, and if you're building at a very high level and and your customers have very high expectations, anything you can do to realize that other 20% is worth it. But I don't think it's a big deal. I mean, we started doing high glue years ago when people started asking for it, and I couldn't tell the difference. I really couldn't. You know, people were asking for the high glue option only on expensive guitars that got our best wood and anyhow, and it's like, is it going to make a good, a bad guitar good? Nope. In my opinion. Is there anything you listen for when you're shaping braces that clues you in on the development of the whole tones? Like well, you can them? hear them. Unfortunately, we, I was kind of hoping we'd run it. Oh, well, a wolf, yeah, a wolf tone is that big honking one note that you get yeah. everywhere you tap. Okay. Okay, so that's why and I want to spread the frequencies there, out. If you hear something like that, do you just abandon that top, or is there something you can do? No, no, you just keep working on it. Okay. Yeah, that's the thing. And there's a bunch of things you can do without getting it too stiff. For example, you know, I'm getting close to my flexibility. These peaks, you can bring these peaks down, and you're not going to change the flexibility factors too much. So you just need to start removing wood in safe areas okay. as you're getting close to your stiffness objectives and pray. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, normally, at least you know, with it, with it, if you do it with enough experience, you can kind of hear it along the way. You can kind of hear it as you guys did. Just kept getting a little bit better each time I, I tried it. But you, you yeah, we did. There was some. Bridge plate, bridge plate thicknesses at all? Pardon me, do I play bridge plates? Do you keep them uh, pretty much a standard thickness, or you do? Uh, yeah, they're about ninety thou. About but the way we treat the edges, you can feather them out. You know, that's another that's another place you can remove wood. Uh, this this ed these two edges are chamfered. These aren't. You can you can play around. You can remove wood there without really changing the overall stiffness. So that's a good place to play. You know, as you get close to your stiffness parameters and you still need to do something, you're looking for those areas that aren't going to change your stiffness too much, but it's going to change your mass, which is going to alter your frequency distribution. So if you, uh, you know, if you hum into the sound hole, starting with a low note, yep. there's a point in each guitar or the guitar yeah. shut, shutters, and I consider the helm I was considered is that the Helmholtz or mm -hmm. I was considered the primary resonant frequency or something, and you could actually tell from the iPhone what uh, what note it is, and what if it's a G note, and what if you're playing with an open G tuning or something, uh, would that 
Is that a problem from your estimation? That's why you want to have the shotgun effect. Because yeah. you know, you're stuck with a few things. The Helmholtz resonance is the, is the fundamental of the air resonance. And you're kind of stuck with that. You know? Now, the, the air resonance has, the air has the ability to vibrate in a lot of different modes, but that's a big one there. It's usually on a dreadnought. It's, it's uh, uh, F sharp, right? Unless you enlarge the sound hole, it's a G. Yeah. Which, is why, which is why Tony Rice's guitar sounds the way it does. <laughs> you know, the variety is, for me, is, has what, is what's worked for me. Just trying, just trying to make sure, by the time I glue this sucker down, it's sort of in the stiffness range where I want it, and there's some good variety in both the top and the back. Well, I'm around for the rest of the afternoon. If more questions arise, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you.